We have got a struggling PS3 here today. So orange light, three beeps, and a flashing red light is what we're getting. This console will not turn on. Or rather, it dies as soon as it does. I've heard this problem is actually related to the hard drive not being connected to the motherboard properly or something like this. I haven't researched it too much, but let's get in there and we'll kind of figure it out as we go. Hopefully we can fix it. Just some information. The model on this is CECHE01. This is one of the older PS3s, however, not the earliest. It does not have PS2 hardware in it, but it can play PS2 games through software-based backwards compatibility. Let's start with the simple stuff first. This little plate you can kind of just get off with your fingernail. To reveal the hard drive, there's a blue screw. And we should be able to just slide like that and have it come out. That is extremely dusty, so I'm gonna go blow that off outside. All right, we've got the dust blown off, so I'm just gonna put it right back in. Let's give it a test. Is it really this simple? It is not that simple. This warranty sticker has to come off, so I'm going to try and preserve it as best I can by soaking it with alcohol to soften the adhesive. That went pretty well. Could not avoid getting that happening, though. And I'll just put it down on a piece of wax paper and leave it right here for later. All right, this first part I'm doing in the garage because I just have visions of dust inside this thing. There we go. And then in there we have a security torx. So the bed has this type of end with the hole in the middle. You can see annoying little screw. You can slide that away. There's a little metal receiver here we want to get out. And a number of screws. Phillips had this time though. Now these screws are different lengths, so you're going to want to pay attention to which one came from where for when you're going to put this back together. There's a ribbon cable in here we want to be careful of. Flip that latch and pull that. I'm going to use a leaf blower to blow out the dust. All right, here I'm not exactly sure what needs to come off and what doesn't. Just start unscrewing. I don't even know what I'm actually hoping to accomplish here. I think my first plan is just to, uh, I just want to get this clean. Get all the dust out, look at the board, all the connections, make sure there's no obvious issue, like something's unplugged or loosely plugged in. That's the kind of thing I'm looking for as I tear this down a bit. I know some people ultimately will do some kind of heating process. Apparently there's some connections on the main chips that can... Well, that was a very rude interruption. There's a latch. The camera probably did not show it, but... Latch for that cable and then it comes out. There's another wire I'm very weary of. Unplug it from here. So I'm actually going to do that with my fingernail. Just kind of pluck it off. Try and remember how it fed through for later. All right, well, here's another latch, just like the last one, so you can maybe see it at this angle. Just gonna lift that up. It should come out. Now we've removed this part. Gonna have to unplug this. It just pulls. And there's also a connector on the back side. This one has a latch we'll need to press in to pull out. They taped that wire to the side, lift it out of the way, stick it back down with a little hollow spot in the middle, just like so. Okay, this actually feels loose already. Oh, connector here, no latch, so we can just pull it. And there's one large one, large latch, then it comes right out. keep those together.
never going to remember where all these screws went, but that's kind of part of the fun, right? Get that out of there, make sure nothing weird's going on down there. Can I just unclip that? Yes, I can. Nice and gentle now. Oh, there's clips up here. Okay. That's off. I'm going to give this a blow with my leaf blower. So this can come out. This battery looks like it should probably come out as well. There we go. That's a little bit tricky, but we got it. Let's get that out of there. I'm going to pull this thing. Okay, she's done. That thermal paste looks like absolutely shot. Completely hard and dried out. That is not doing its job. And that's probably where our issue comes from. Which I was hoping I wouldn't find, but I knew. I knew it in my heart that that's what I'd find. These look like they're going to have to pry up. Yeah, I'm just going to have to straight bend that a little bit. Okay. Scrape it for now. All right, now we'll get some alcohol. wonder what my neighbors think of me. Just like disassembling a PS3 in my garage like a total weirdo. Or maybe they think I'm a really cool guy. Like, oh, is, is that a PS3 he's working on in there? Love PS3. And of course, there's a bunch of thermal grease on this part. Okay, now we're down at my ping pong table, and the fix I've seen people do online for this is actually to put a lot of heat in the chips surrounding these regions on both sides of the board in some attempt to partially or fully reflow the solder joints and reestablish any connections that may have been broken or disjointed during operation of the system. So I'm going to try the exact same thing since I have no better ideas. All the connections looked good, I don't see any obvious issues on the board, so this is the only thing I can think to try. Let's do it. At this point, everything is extremely hot. These are scalding to touch. So I'm gonna let this cool off for like 15 minutes, come back, flip it over, and repeat the process on the backside. I'm gonna use another piece of cardboard to prop up this corner, get things a little more level. I believe we want to heat up these chips as well, so I should have taken these thermal pads off. For now, I'm just going to get them out of the way. And when I get them off, I'll just put them aside and we will be reusing them. I did put an attachment on my heat gun to kind of concentrate the heat more. When we're happy with that, this time I'm going to cheat by using the cool setting on a regular blow dryer to cool this off a little faster. Let me demonstrate something real quick. So as you can see, the setting on my heat gun is hot enough to melt solder. However, I didn't see it actually physically happening on the board. I don't want to go so hog with it that I start burning and melting the plastic casings and things like this. So I'm just going to hope that I got it well enough and at least partially flowed or did something to reestablish any joints that were intermittent. When this is sufficiently cooled, I'm going to put these pads back on. Seems about right. Next up is going to be new thermal paste. I have the Arctic MX2. This stuff's pretty common. And we're satisfied with that. Okay, that worked pretty well. Now this that I bent away earlier, but I'll bend that back up so it covers those ports again. Good as new. Flip this over. Now we can start screwing some things back in place. I think now we can put this battery back in. So that fits like that. So this clips on somehow. I can't remember how, but it did. Make sure these clips are going on. Okay, so that's locked in. Don't forget to plug that back in. Have to make sure also we tuck this wire through the strain relief there. Feels all right. 
So we'll turn it over. Okay, that feels correct. Plug this guy back in before I forget. Next, we can get these plates back in. Time to start getting some screws back in. Start with these little ones. One goes right here and the other right over here. There's also this other weird one that just happens to be super long. It goes behind the power cord. Grounding screw has washers on it. Now we have five more of these regular medium-sized Phillips screws to put in. Next, we'll bring these two parts back in. Plug in the cable. With our four remaining coarse thread Phillips, we can fasten it. Next comes the disk drive. Make sure the latch is flipped up and insert as such. Close the latch, and we can just set it down. There is another connector we need to plug in. We lift this up a bit and plug it in. Now this wire also tucks under a black latch towards the back of the unit. To me, it looks okay. Now we can bring in the power supply, run this wire down the middle. First, I'm gonna plug this into the back of the supply here until we hear it click. Then we can just kind of set it down. We can plug this one in now. Make sure it's in all the way. You might also remember there's a small piece of tape on the side of the power supply that this black wire was running through. I'm just gonna slightly lift it up, pull that tape back, and get it back into position. And that's a done deal. Five more screws to put in. I think this is the last part now. There's a few things going on, so I'll try and do this logically. First, we'll get in this cable. So with that latch up, get that in. You should feel some resistance. Then we can flip it down. This black wire, I recall, fed underneath the silver ribbon. There we go. So I am gonna leave it loose and get this other ribbon. We want that brown latch up. Put the blue ribbon in, and then we can flip it down. Last but not least, the black wire should just push into the socket. On the underside of the cover of the casing, get that cable back in. Should feel it go in, close the latch. So there's pins you can kind of get lined up on them, and then you can drop it down. All right, you should have two small screws. One goes right here, and the other goes right here. This one weird medium sized screw in the back corner here. We'll do the long ones next. And we'll put back this receiver clip we took out earlier. This acts as a nut for that screw on the outside. Put our lid back on. Now I can turn it up and reinstall that weird torque screw. This little rubber foot can go back on. Get the hard drive in. Almost forgot, we want to get this sticker back on. I mean, that's okay. You can definitely tell someone's opened it, but uh, we've seen worse. And that should be it. Let's find out if it works. Moment of truth, I'm nervous about it. Ah, uh, it's doing something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I need to get a controller for this thing to actually do anything else with it. Well, I'll be. We did it, guys. I didn't know if that was going to work, but I guess heating up those components really did do something with the connections that caused, you know, it to be working now, which is good news. And I think by applying the new thermal paste, this thing should stand the test of time for at least, you know, a number of years until it dries out again. All in all, good repair. We get a working PS3, and we're happy about it. When all's said and done, I know this fix has been done before, but hopefully I showed it in maybe a new way that gives a little more insight than you could have got in a different video. If you liked what you saw, well, I'm happy about that. Thanks for watching. I realized shortly after filming that last bit, you can use a PS4 controller on PS3. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be sitting on my basement floor playing Bejeweled 2 for the next six hours.